botage. Botage, botage. É, eu estou atrás de histórias sobre piranha, será que, que tem alguma... Sim, senhor, eu sou vítima de... O senhor eu mesmo? Amor de Deus, eu sou eu mesmo. É, é aqui tá. Vem aqui na ponta do nariz. So, you know, I'm just walking along here and I just asked this gentleman, I said, I'm after stories about piranhas. Anybody got anything to tell me? He says, well, I, you know, I had the end of my nose taken off by one. Yeah, uh, you know, his, his wife dropped something in the water. He just, you know, dived down, water about waist deep, and a piranha had the end off his nose. He says he opened his eyes and saw lots of blood and many piranhas. And if he hadn't been able to leap straight out of the water, he fears he might have died. This is a piranha story. An old man was left in his floating house by his family just for a couple of hours. They came back, he'd gone. They were just his clothes there. So, you know, they thought he must have gone to take a bath or something, but he wasn't in sight anywhere. They searched, they searched. Eventually, they found just his skeleton. I mean, literally, you know, he'd gone in the water because he was old. He wasn't able to get back out. And the piranhas just had it. You first time? No, it was two months ago. I've managed to unearth a newspaper report from the 1970s that describes the exact bus crash that I remember where some of the passengers were eaten by piranhas. It reports that on the 14th of November 1976, the bus was travelling from Manaus to the town of Itacoatiara, a journey of about five hours. After driving through the night, it crashed into a tributary of the Amazon, killing 39 passengers. The newspaper also mentions the name of a survivor, Dirceo Araujo. I've managed to track him down to find out what he can remember from that fateful day, as this might allow me to pass judgment on the guilt or otherwise of the piranha. Okay, so... Dirceo tells me he was sitting at the very rear of the bus, and like the rest of the passengers, he had been sleeping for most of the journey. On board that day were several families, a couple of students named Alex and Ivan, as well as many other men and women returning to their homes in Itacoatiara. Not long before the accident, the bus went through a pothole, waking Dirceo up. This, he tells me, could well have saved his life. Here is the place where the accident this is the very spot where the accident happened. The bus came down here, went in the river, down there. Dirceo doesn't know if the brakes failed or if the bus skidded, but the driver had done the same route several times that day. The papers at the time reported the suggestion that he fell asleep and at the ferry crossing carried straight on into the river. One minute everything's normal, but you know, literally the next moment it, it, it's in the water. There were people crying, wailing, much despair. Aí foi que eu que eu fui no corredor, tá todo mundo lá querendo sair para 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 naquela já naquela porta. There were people at the front trying to open the door by pulling it, and he's basically saying that you know that, that door only opens if you push. Then the water, the water started to come in. At which point he went back to where he'd been seated. There was a boy there who'd been trying to break the window, and he actually saw, just saw this boy's foot, you know, disappearing out of the bus. And he saw the foot, followed it, and managed to get himself out through the same hole. Que passei a cintura e essa perna aqui, uma moça pegou nesse daqui. He's just about clear of the bus. Somebody grabbed hold of his leg. Can you imagine? Somebody is, is trying to grab hold of his leg while he is trying to escape and get to the surface. Actually, had to kick this person's hand off to get free from the bus and actually, you know, escape from the wreck. Thirty-nine people remained trapped on the bus and didn't survive. In the panic of his escape, Dirceo doesn't remember seeing any piranhas. So no one knows how long it was after the bus submerged that the piranhas attacked. He 
even to this day, just going over the bridge, which you know, they've got now over the river, he says every time he crosses, you know, he just remembers, remembers that day. It was several hours before rescuers could winch the bus out of the water. By that time, it was far too late for any remaining passengers. Foi três meninas grandonas assim e uma que recém-nascida. Só o resto tudo foi adulto. There were three children and one baby, actually all from the same family. You know, they were brought up dead. Todo estragado por causa de piranha. There was one body there had literally been stripped of all the flesh, only the boots were left. The impact piranhas have on a human body is distinct and may be too shocking for some viewers to see. These horrific images from recent cases arriving at the Manaus city morgue show just what a piranha is capable of doing and the type of wounds it leaves. Exposed flesh and soft tissue are removed first, which is exactly what Dora de Barbosa witnessed when she arrived on the scene as the bodies were being extracted from the bus. She told me that some of the victims were brought out still hugging each other. And her story made me truly realize what it meant to lose someone in this crash. Dora was just 17 years old at the, at the time of the tragedy and what happened, she was living in Itacoatiara and she just actually started her, her nurse training at the time and so she actually went to the river at the site of the accident. Totalmente o rosto, não tinha nada no rosto, só mesmo nem as cartilagens mesmo tinha, então só os ossos. That's pretty tragic. Um, Dora says, you know, she, yeah, she did know some of the some of the people on the bus, which just makes it sort of extra, extra horrific. Really, that was the 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 husband of a teacher of hers, and she says that he was just, you know, his face was completely eaten away down to, you know, not down to the bone, but down to cartilage. Tinha também o Ivan. O Ivan era uma pessoa que eu gostava na época, né? Estava apaixonada por ele. And also. Um, a lad called Ivan, who she liked very much. This was her childhood sweetheart, and uh, he was one of the victims as well. And she said, you know, because of this, she's, you know, she found it very difficult early on to talk about this whole business. But um, as a result of this, she said she actually, you know, left the area and uh, didn't return for a while because of the memories of, of the place. <laughs> He was wearing uh, sort of quite strong clothing and he reckons that, you know, part of the clothing actually somehow got snagged on the bus and possibly that's why he didn't escape. He was identified He only actually identified him because he had uh, his identity document inside the pocket of his shirt. The body of his brother was was wrapped by then, and you know he picked the body up and he said, "Well, you know, it, it was just so light. You know, you could just tell, even though he couldn't see, could just tell that you know it, it was just just bones there." Se acha mais a piranha. Nós temos um peixe aqui. Tinha os outros que eram são predadores também, mas o principal é a piranha, né? So he's saying that you know this 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 would have been a piranha that actually did this, basically just you know stripped the, the the flesh from the body. I've come to visit an Amazon village where dealing with these fearsome neighbors is a daily occurrence. This remote place is actually called the Piranha Reserve. But what I soon learn is that it is in the dry season, when the water is low and the piranhas are concentrated, that the villagers are most at risk. It is a particular time of year. It's, it's principally the months of September and October here. You can't even get in the water to have a wash. Main main food item here is fish. So there you are. You're, you know you have to clean the fish in order to prepare it for the meal. And just you know the smell of that will will bring a concentration of piranhas there. So you've got to be careful. Keep your fingers nowhere near the water. But on one occasion, this family dropped their guard with horrific consequences. Um, it was a. Uh, 
A grandson of, uh, of Julius. Mm. Quem que estava tratando? Era a minha esposa. Ah, eu sei. Mm -hmm. é. I'm saying, you know, you can't look after kids all the time. His wife was um, cleaning some fish off the, the, the back of the house, and the child just ran, as children do, um, from one side of the house to the other, and just fell in the water the other side. And he said, literally, you know, they heard a noise, they got there, it was, it was already too late. The child fell in the water and just didn't come up. All they said that they saw was, was just, uh, just a turbulence in the water of the piranhas devouring the child, just literally moments after the child had fallen off the side of the boat. With nets, they were trying to sort of, you know, re retrieve the child, even while this was going on. And eventually, he said, you know, all they got in was bones. E demora quanto tempo para chegar nesse? Esse foi rápido. When I asked how how long it took, he said, no, this you know this happened very rapidly because you know there are just there are just you know so many, so many piranhas here. This is what I'd been searching for: a first-hand account of piranhas attacking, killing, and eating a human. In this case, a three-year-old boy who the grandfather preferred not to name. Yet the reality of hearing a story like this takes away all feelings of success I might have had. It's one thing to, to hear the myth of piranhas, but I mean, it, you know, it's quite something else to, to, to talk to somebody who's actually seen the truth of that with their own eyes.